Hey everybody, and welcome back to more Pokemon Soul Silver. Last time we visited the Burn Tower, faced off against our rival Silver for the third time, and we met Usain and Morty and saw the uh, legendary dogs go out on their own. Suicune randomly ran up to us. I bet the male trainer probably had a little uh, bacon treat for him, I hope. And in this episode, we're going to be tackling the fourth gym, uh, the ghost gym. I almost call it the gas gym, and I don't know why. I mean, there is fog everywhere. Talk about gas. Here's Ghastly, and, uh, I brought up before, earlier in the LP, how much I like Ghastly. And Ghastly is one of my favorite gas... Uh, gas. It's one of my favorite gas Pokemon. It doesn't have a lot of competition there. But it's one of my favorite ghost types. And I admittedly do not have a good strategy for fighting ghost types. And that is something with the ghost type gym, um, I want to bring up. I like this gym. However... I personally think this should have been the last, maybe not the last gym, but it should have been later on in the game. And hear me out on this. My, I guess, grievance with this gym is I think at this point in the game, I don't think you have enough chances to get something that can fight ghost Pokemon decently. And there are Pokemon you can get. I have brought up before with the Eevees that you can get either an Espeon or an Umbreon. And while that is true, your odds of having one of those, unless you're doing a lot of grinding by this point, not they're not rare, but they're a good chance you're not going to have an e or an Espeon or an Umbreon by this point. If you have Umbreon, you can destroy this gym. Honestly, even with Espeon, if you have at least the Psybeam or some kind of psychic move, because you can destroy the gym as well, because a lot of the ghost Pokemon that are going to get used here are Ghastlies and Haunters and Gengar, stuff like that, that are dual Ghost Poison and are weak to Psychics. That was a big issue in the original uh, game as well, and, well, the can- well, uh, obviously, red, uh, blue, and, uh, I almost said green, a uh, yellow, I, my brain froze there, um, because Psychic types are so OP in the original games. There was nothing you could do to fight Psychic types, however, in these games, I guess you can kind of flip that on its head because you can kind of get an SB on there and destroy this gym. It depends. This gym, for me, is one of the more difficult gyms. It is not the hardest gym in the game because that is a later one, but I'll get to that when I get to that. This gym can be tricky, though, so I just wanted to give a fair warning if you are uh, playing this game as well alongside me or if you were playing in the future. Um, I think this gym can be quite challenging. I'm also under-leveled for this gym, I should bring up. Not really under but I'm at probably, I'm a tiny, like, a one or two levels lower than I probably need to be, but I can work with what I got. Funny enough, though, talking about this gym, is Heracross is bug-fighting. So Heracross should be weak for all these Pokemon. Thankfully, though, all these guys are gonna use Ghastly. And with Aerial Ace, I can counteract that and just Aerial Ace everything to death. And due to Heracross's high attack stat, I can mow through about everything. Now, if Heracross was able to get some more bug moves before now, I would have an easier time. Um, this gym also is quite different in the remake. In the remake, it, as you can see here, when you defeat a trainer, the lights go out with it. And this can be a bit tricky. My idea what I was going to do is teach Heracross Payback, but I unfortunately cannot do it. I try to plan ahead with this. It's really the only dark type uh, attack move I have, so I thought it would work, but unfortunately I cannot. I can't use U-Turn either. It's really weird that Heracross can't learn U-Turn, even though it's a bug type move and he's a bug type. I don't get it. U-Turn's definitely a lot more useful for uh, flying types and like any other type. Like I know a Molga in Gen 5 can get U-Turn as well. Um, it also has Volt Tackle, which is not Volt Tackle. Uh, it's the move, it's such a move where like, it hits you and goes back and like returns to the trainer. Because I remember fighting uh, the... Uh, Electro-type gym leader, I can't think of her name now, in Gen 5. It's the one everybody thinks is hot. Uh, she uses it, so yeah. But I'm talking about the gym, though. If you defeat a trainer, basically, the room around it will go dark, and you will not be able to see. The thing is, though, if you fall off of the platform, it just sends you to the beginning of the um, gym, and you can run your way back up, and the lights will be back on, which is good. One thing I do recommend, though, is always being careful when you do these fights with these guys, because a lot of them have mean looks, so if you have an Eevee, you will have a struggle battle, and they have Confuse Ray, which is very annoying to fight ghost types with. 
Also, talking about ghost sites and haunters on the screen. Uh, Ash's haunter in the original anime just randomly left them. It's still weird to me. Well, it's actually fitting, actually. I should bring this up because spoilers for Pokemon Journeys, but Ash now has a Gengar, which is awesome. I have to say, I ha I am admittedly way behind on Journey. It's one of those things like I had this issue with Pokemon anime a lot. Where I watch the first couple episodes because I'm like, eh, I'll give it a shot. And I like it, but then I just stop watching it. And, uh, I remember in the original when he had to go fight Sabrina, he had a Haunter to try to help him win. And Sabrina, he beat Sabrina with it, but still, it was kind of like a cheap win. And now he just won has a Gengar. I mean, he didn't catch as a Ghastly or a Haunter, he just straight up caught a Gengar. Ash's team in Journeys is amazing. Like, obviously, spoilers for Journeys, but like, I know he has a Gengar, he also has Pikachu. Uh, he has a Dragonite, which is amazing. He has a, a Lucario now. He hatched it as a Riolu. I remember seeing that. He has that weird dragon from Gen 8. And I feel like uh, he's a Farfetch, which is probably going to involve Mr. Fetch. Stuff like that. Like, he has a really good team in Journeys. And it's awesome, though. Because, like, he usually catches... Like, I remember when they did the black and white anime, he caught all the starters. who like, none of them evolved except for... Uh, Tepigs, I know he had a pig knight, but his team overall kind of sucked. And now he's like the Chad Ash for some reason. Which I know in X and Y he had a pretty good team, and even in the Diamond and Pearl, which I Diamond and Pearl's really when I just quit the anime. Um, not that it's awful, it's just the pacing in the anime is so terrible at times. Um, in times, I mean all the time. But um he had a pretty good team by the end of the Diamond and Pearl arc. He had Infernape, he had Torterra, Gliscor. Stuff like that. Ash then can kick, like, be serious and be awesome, but a lot of time he's just useless. I guess not with the anime as well, I should bring up his uh, Johto team as well. But um, in Johto, I'm trying to think. I know he had Bayleaf. He had Cyndaquil, who wouldn't evolve until the Diamond and Pearl uh, arc when they did the Pokemon League, which was awesome. I remember hearing about that and watching that episode. And, um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, Totodile, obviously, Pikachu. Um,. He had a Heracross, remember that? Snorlax, stuff like that. He had some decent Pokemon. It's just, it still wasn't great. However, I will bring up, um, the Pokemon League fight he has with Gary is still one of my favorite battles, probably, in the anime. Gotta be careful for Sucker Punch as well. That's a kind of an annoying move. I do wish that they used more ghost types in this gym. What's really weird is a lot of them are uh, Ghastlies and Haunters and uh, the Gengar, obviously I'm going to spoil for the gym leader, but um, what's weird is they don't, as far as in my memory serves me, I don't think you fight a single uh, Misdreavus, which was a new ghost type brought in Gen 2. And it's not like Misdreavus is terrible. Misdreavus is pretty cool, especially now that it has an evolution Gen 4 onwards with Miss Magius. But it's so strange that it, it that, like Misdreavus just isn't in the gym, it seems. I will say, though, in terms of um, gym designs, I do like how this gym looks a lot. It's really cool. But, like, my issue, though, with this gym, though, is, like, you are fighting just the same, like, Ghastlies and Haunters and stuff again. And it does get old after a while. Like, you can only see a Ghastly so many times. And I love Ghastly. I love the Ghastly line. I think it's a great line of Pokemon. It's iconic for a reason. And I've used Ghastly, the Ghastly line, a lot. It's just, I wish you got to see another ghost type besides this. Like, I know people hate Gen 5, and I can understand some of the Pokemon designs aren't the best, but, like, at least Gen 5 was pretty good about their gyms not reusing the same Pokemon over and over and over again, I'd say. I'm, and I love Gen, I love the remakes, and I love Gen 2, but that is definitely a problem that they had, so, yeah. I think as the Gens go along, they do get better about having to reuse Pokemon over and over again. I, well, I mean, they have, like, 800-something, or 900 to go for, so, I mean, it shouldn't be that big of an issue, but still... And Heracross is about to just... I, I'm assuming Heracross one-shots this Haunter. I don't remember. No, it doesn't, but still. Like, look at the... Well, no, he does! Watch! Why would you do that, Haunter? 
why do you- I mean, to be fair, Haunter fainting won't kill it. It's already a ghost, so... It just didn't stand a ghost of a chance, is all I'm gonna say, but still. And, like, that even mean look is, like, you can still switch out at the end of the battle if you want, or the end of, like, making your Pokemon faint, which is cool. So, like, my trick here is just to throw Eevee in and then switch back out so Eevee can get experience and catch up. It's my idea. I do apologize. I am going to be using Eevee quite a bit because I want Eevee to get high enough level so I can uh, evolve it at that time and make it into probably one of my best Pokemon I'm going to have on the entire game, but still. It's really good. A good thing here as well, um, I should bring up, if you're using Koala or Bailiff, you will have a bit of a tougher time with this. However, if you have a Croconaw, you can actually make this fight quite e- or the fight, with this, uh, gym quite easy. Because Croconaw will learn Bite, and Bite is a Dark-type move that you can destroy this gym with. It's not hard, and Croconaw is quite good. I've done this fight before with him, and that's kind of, like, the thing you're gonna get. I think certain gyms, when you do with- pick a certain starter- are more difficult depending on who you pick, and that's just to be expected with any Pokemon game, really. But still, Croconaw is quite good. I I don't even really want to when I hype up the Cyndaquil line. I don't mean to do it all the time and like shit on the other two. It's just I love the Cyndaquil line a lot, but the Totodile line is still really good. But let's face off against Morty. So we're going to start out with Heracross here, which could be a bit of a risky move, but Heracross's aerial ace against these uh, the Gastly's have been working pretty good. Starting out, that Gastly's already almost dead. That's good, because we got it in red health, and due to this, I'm pretty sure he's going to go ahead and try to use his item. Yes, he is. Hyper Potion. So, this is what you want to do for this fight, because Morty, to me, is one of the hardest gym leaders in the game. Not the hardest, but definitely one of the most tricky. That Ghastly, it's already dead, uh, for a ghost, which doesn't make sense, but it's level 21 with the moves Lick, Spite, Mean Look, and Curse. And next up is his first of two Haunters. It's level 21 with that move there, Hypnosis, we're going to that a lot, because it was annoying. It has Dream Eater, Curse, and Nightmare. In the original, he doesn't have Dream Eater, but he has the move Mimic, which basically just takes the move you're using and just uses it against you. Um, this Haunter can be quite annoying. That Hypnosis gets old, and with Dream Eater, it can do quite a bit of damage. What I'm doing here is I knew he was going to go for Nightmare or Dream Eater, because that can really hurt your Pokemon. I'm going to throw Weed Slave out here as a bit of a... Um, unfortunately, I have to use it as like a dummy or a sacrifice to revive Haunter. A Haunter. I wish I had Haunter. Uh, my hair across. And I'm doing this for a reason because I want to see it get back and just come in to, like, demolish this Haunter. I hate doing it to Weed Slave. He's probably high as a kite right now, but he fought a good battle. So, thank you, Weed Slave. Your dream was eaten. Your dream of being an actual good member of the team was eaten. But yeah, we're going to throw out Kenya here. He's our regular Spearow. I, I actually am keeping Kenya here because I want him to also be a bit of a sacrifice for us, and we can use him as a fly slave later on. But he actually has a few dark type moves we can rely upon, so if you want to use the spear of all with Firo, it's not a bad idea, honestly. But unfortunately, Kenya is getting wiped out. I remember I forgot his name was Kenya, and when I was recording, I first read it. I read it as Kanye, and I really laughed a lot. I really should like nickname him to Kanye, Kanye the Spearow. But unfortunately, Kenya can't really do us any good. So we're going to throw out good old Polava to help us out. We got three levels over this thing, so let's see how it goes. And I I know I brought it up when I fought um, the first gym leader, um, whose name I'm forgetting now, which is really sad. But the Gen 2 gym leader theme is so good. But I wanted to bring up, um, we've seen the Pokemon use Curse. The cool thing about Curse is Curse actually has a no type in the game. It's just a mystery type. It's just question mark, question mark, question mark, which I really think is cool. Yeah, I like it a lot. But I'm going more into Morty, though. I wanted to bring up some things about him, because Morty is quite different in this, uh, in the remakes compared to the originals, because he actually has a redesign. He got a cool little scarf. He's got white pants. I actually prefer the redesign for Morty over his original, but 
It's also time for Morty's uh, ace Pokemon. He's getting ready to send them out now. I want to prepare and send out Flaffy because I have a plan for this. And this Pokemon is a bit of a dick to fight. Level 25, Gengar. In the remakes, obviously this game, it is holding a Citrus Berry. So if you get down to Yellow Health, it's going to restore its health. Look at that. One Shadow Ball took out Flaffy. I know Flaffy doesn't have the best special defense, but that's still incredible. So it has all sorts of moves. Shadow Ball, Mean Look, um, Hypnosis, and Sucker Punch. And Gengar does not fuck around. This is a tough Pokemon to fight. I'm just trying to throw anything I can at to take it down. This thing is very, very difficult if you don't have a move to fight it with, like Crocodile having Bite. The only thing I can rely upon is Heracross being a Chad and just throwing some Aerial Laces on it and just hitting it with whatever I got. Like here, as I brought up earlier, it's going to use a Citrus Berry, which is really annoying. What really sucks, and it surprisingly didn't use Hypnosis on Heracross, which surprised me, because I admittedly had to do this battle twice because I lost the first time. So my plan is here to throw out Eevee, because Eevee's a normal type, the Shadow Ball will not work against Eevee, and I, my plan is to heal up Heracross with Eevee since it can't really throw Shadow Ball at me. Shadow Ball hits like a truck, and here's where I'm about to get screwed. It's using Hypnosis on Eevee because that does work and it puts Eevee to sleep. And, um, I'm getting ready... No, no, no. I'm not making a mistake. Not yet. My mistake is later on, for a spoiler for you. But I... My plan... There we go. Mean look. That thing just throws a mean look on you and you cannot escape. At all. And you screw yourself because you get put to sleep. It'll just use Dream Eater on you over and over and over again. This boss fight is kind of annoying and difficult. But I do like it. Like I said, though, if you can get your Eevee to evolve into an Umbreon, you can make this fight quite easier. Um, but even then, I've always, like, struggled in this fight. I, even as a kid, I had a hard time with him. Cool thing, uh, not cool, but a thing I wanted to bring up about Morty, though, is in Pokemon Stadium 2, uh, the first Morty battle, the, jo oh, the Johto Gym Leader Castle, um, he only has one ghost type, and that's his Gengar. The rest of his Pokemon are not ghost types, so, like, the rest of his Pokemon are... Ariano, Sudowoodo, Marowak, Girafferig, and Noctowl. There were other ghost types in Stadium 2. You had Ghastly and Haunter. You had Mistrevis. Why doesn't he have those? In his second fight, he has a Mistrevis, but here he doesn't. It makes no sense. And, uh, talking about other spinoffs, I guess, of Morty in them. In Pokemon Puzzle League, he has a Ghastly instead of a Gengar. It's very weird. And yeah, I am down to Eevee, which is not good. <laughs> Eevee is level, I think, 19 and against this Gengar level 25, and it's asleep, so... Yeah, I'm quite in trouble. The good thing is, though, is his Sucker Punch rarely can hit Eevee, because Sucker Punch misses quite a bit. If you try to use it back-to-back, -back, 9 times out of 10, it will miss, so... Yeah... And I have officially been screwed because Gengar is using Mean Look on me. This is an issue because I have no moves that can attack Gengar. And I had this happen twice, but the first time I fought Morty, I got stuck with this and I literally had to wait until Gengar struggled himself to death. And then I immediately lost right after. And I sat here and fought Morty for almost 15 minutes, only to lose. And I had the same thing happen here, where Eevee got mean looked, and Morty couldn't do anything to me because he couldn't use Shadow Ball against me. And all I can do to Morty is throw Sand Attacks at it. And this would have been good early in the fight, because I could have thrown Sand Attack at it and lowered its accuracy, where Shadow Ball wouldn't have done anything, and then I could have just threw... Uh, hair cross in and hit him to death. The issue is, though, he keeps putting me to sleep and I can't do anything to him. And that is an issue with this fight that I don't think they were prepared for, is what happens if you only have normal type moves on a Pokemon or a fighting type move or a ground type and you can't do anything to Gengar? I legit sat here recording this for almost 10 to 15 minutes again, waiting for Gengar to hurt himself, and he wouldn't do it. 
finally he struggles himself to death. I have never seen that happen on any Pokemon Soul Silver LP. I'm sure it has, but still. I sat there and laughed the entire time, and oh, it's so funny. But his last Pokemon is his second Haunter, and it has the moves. Well, wait for it to pop out. Thankfully, I got Quilob and Hair across his backup, so I can take this thing out quite easily. It is level 23 with the moves Curse, Mean Look, Sucker Punch, and Nightshade. In the originals, it has Mimic instead of Sucker Punch, so there he probably used Mimic. But thankfully, it will be okay. Kulava is a Chad and can take out this Haunter. Well, it can take him out of Yellow Health at least. But that is an issue I really wish they would have fixed for the remakes, is that you could not get trapped in the Morty battle and have to wait for him to struggle himself to death. It is quite annoying. <laughs> Yeah, you have discipline, all right? You sat there and waited for your Gengar to struggle to death. And he had another Hyper Potion. What would I have done? I don't mean to be so loud. I am making this peak a lot. But what would have happened if he would have done that Hyper Potion and just struggled himself to death and kept using Hyper Potions? I would have been screwed. But thankfully, he's burned, so he can't really do a whole lot to me. This battle's pretty much already won. So, yeah. One HP. Just because Morty wouldn't give up. This ghost will not die. <laughs> Why won't you die? There we go. Morty is officially kaput. This is by far the longest gym battle we have in the entire game. And it's just because that Gengar refused to die. But all in all, I do like Morty quite a bit. And we got the Fog Badge for Morty. The Fog Badge is an okay badge. We, if you have Pokemon up to level 5, they'll now obey you. And we can now use Surf outside of battle. Like I brought up last episode, I think, or the episode before, Surf is a really good HM. And he will give a Shadow Ball. Morty's fight can be annoying, but it is worth it purely for the Shadow Ball TM. And because it's such a good move, and I need a move for Eevee to use against... Ghost types and especially like fighting types, I am going to teach Eevee Shadow Ball because I think it's a pretty good move for Eevee to have. And it's a good move because it can lower a Pokemon's, I think, special defense? or Yeah, I think it's special defense. It's overall one of my, well, actually, it's probably my favorite uh, ghost type move even to this day. I really like Shadow Ball quite a lot, but yeah, we got our fourth gym badge. We are officially halfway through the Pokemon Gym Challenge. Four more and we can take on the Pokemon League. Before in the video, something interesting happened while screen while I was training Eevee, and I really want to share this because it's quite funny. What the hell are you doing here, Raiko? What am I supposed to do? It's my poor little fox monster against a giant electric dog. Even in the face of Eevee, Raiko is fearless.